<laughs> she's 24. You should show up on the date with this box. She's 24. Hey, honey. <laughs> let's, let's have some dinner. I want to have a nice solid stool. <laughs> Everybody listen to Derek Carter. Yeah. We all know he's the party starter. Uh. So if you want to listen to a podcast for free, then listen to a pocket party. Uh. Pocket party. They're wrong. And we're back. Hey, everybody. It's your host, Dar- Darren Carter, the party starter, and the one and only... John DeResta, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for uh, letting me use your kitchen to record a podcast in. Yeah, this is some operation. <laughs> I'm telling, dude, I can't even move my chair at all. Cause it's is like, this how Joe Rogan started? <laughs> exactly. Sadly, I've been doing this for five years now. <laughs> We're past the started phrase phase. You know, but um, hey, I want to I want to thank you. I, I, we were over there, and it was a little too dark, so I said, let's just jump in. And, yeah, and, yeah, um, yeah. And also, the uh, living room is now my store. Yeah. So behind this camera, there's 40 rustic benches. Can I show? Up. Can I show them real quick? Go ahead. All right, let's do it. Let's I'll be, do it. I'll be yeah. right here. All right. So check this out. <laughs> yeah, look at this. Wow. Check this out. These are all for sale, you guys. These are all for sale. If you guys are listening to the podcast, I want you to. Go over to YouTube and check it out <laughs> on the YouTube channel. You will see all this furniture. It is for sale. Even the table. Even the table. That's right. Oh, wow. You have a lot. Mirrors and stuff, whatnot. Wow. Look at this cabinet. This is cool. Look at that. I got my flashlight. I can open it Hold up. on. This is a new thing I've been making. Yeah. Tell us. I throw these in free. If someone buys two or three benches, Yeah. I make these funky tattoo artwork. I oh, make wow. these. Oh, wow. Yeah. They're cool, right? Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Every one of them is just a, a completely freehand design that has no rhyme or reason. Is that for sale? Uh, no, I bought that. That's funny. That. Oh, that's cool. Adrian made that. Oh, that's cool. I gave her 50 for it. Dude, I like the door. Yeah, that came with the house. Wow. Everything has a price. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> like, how much is, would this table be? Uh, it was custom $5.99. She didn't like the color. So I made her another one. She gave me a two hundred dollar tip for making her another one. Yeah. And it's online for three ninety nine. But I would sell it for just about anything. I'm the only guy on earth that has uh, probably thirty five or forty different dinner tables in the last twenty six years. Who else does that? Nobody. Besides, besides woodworkers. I don't know who else. Crackheads. There you go. <laughs> Wasn't that a joke we did on a previous episode? Not sure, but today was um, March twenty seventh. Yeah. 1998, I resigned the police department 26 years wow. ago today. I'm going to move this just a little bit. Wow. So, is, 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 I think once you're, what's your foot though? I'm afraid you're I see it. I got it. Once you're a cop, you're always a cop in a sense, right? Like your, your heart is in it as no, far as, no, I, no? I, no, I mean, I didn't like it right from the beginning. Yeah. And it's hard to care about the subway of New York Yeah. for $300 a week. You know what I mean? Like, I never cared if someone jumped the turnstile. I never cared if someone smoked a cigarette. I had zero investment. Mm. So I was in a uh, quandary. Do you know what a quandary is? Yeah, a rock and a hard place. It's like saying you'll do a podcast. Next thing you know, you're in the kitchen. (laughs) You're in the kitchen. Yeah, next to the (laughs) fiber one. (laughs) Wow. No, I, uh, I, I, what it has done, (laughs) it's made me um, on stage as a comedian. I patrol. You know, that stage is my post. Yeah. You know what I mean? I kind of, I, I, I'm, I'm in charge. Yeah. It's my party. And and that goes back to standing in the subway. Hey, this is, this. I got to keep myself alive and right. keep people alive here. And it's made me very vigilant. And, uh, you know, like if I'm at 7-Eleven, I look in the window to see who's behind me. Yeah. You dig what I mean? Like yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I'm three steps ahead of everybody, especially in L.A., where, you know, you put your gas in your car in LA like this. Yeah. You can't keep your back turned for And you're supposed second. to lock the passenger doors because sometimes you're messing with the fuel thing and then they open the passenger oh, door. Oh God, I never even heard that. Yeah. And really? They, and they steal stuff that you have on your seat oh, and whatnot. And you want to, it's funny you say that. I did something today. I don't know if it was here or at the, I, I did something where I said, in Long Island, I, oh, I know what it was. The Uber was coming, and I rolled my luggage to the end of a driveway and let it sit there while the, I waited the half hour inside. Yeah. 
If I would have done that here, it would I would I'll be gone, and I would think it would be gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just don't. Oh, and another thing. In Long Island, you can start your car and let it run. Yeah. Here, every uh, time I let my car run, and I run back in the house, when I come out, I expect it to be gone. <laughs> yeah. I don't like it. And you know what? And he's not making this up. Um, you had your truck stolen. I had my truck stolen twice in 24 hours. I went. Did you know that? Wow. Got stolen twice. They found it. My son said, hey, we've, it's, at, it's at a movie theater. They didn't impound it. And Matt's called a, a tow truck. And they said 400 tonight or 150 tomorrow. Mm. So Matt called me. I was on the road as a comedian. I said, let's do it tomorrow. And he went and it was gone again. Wow. So whoever stole it had the keys. It was their car now. Wow. And now you're still, they're like squatters for your. They were squatters for my car. And then winds up, I think they were homeless. Dude, I think I'm a squatter uh, with this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I <laughs> come to your house. That's funny. <laughs> like, oh, I wanna, here's what I wanted to do. By the way, if you guys uh, want to come see me live, I'll be at the San Jose. Go to San Jose. There's a place called Mama Kin. I'll be there April 25th. April 25th at Mama Kin, San Jose. The link will be in the description. So make sure you get your tickets. And uh, if you want to come see John Duress, the same thing, follow him on Instagram. And let's get into it, all right? So my son. Got it. My son, Oz the Bass Boss, AKA Oz the Bass Boss. He, he had to, he wanted to, um, one of the assignments at school was to interview someone who was 55 and up. And uh, we thought, both my wife and I were like, John DeResta, let's, let's interview John DeResta. Right. And you know, cause it was supposed to be a senior citizen and, but I was like, well, we'll just say 55 and up. But, um, so anyways, we-, we Ouch, end <laughs> Yeah, I know. I, cause I- No, it's all right, I know my place. Cause especially at first I go, hey, can we, you know, my son interview you? And you're like, oh yeah, you want me to come to the school, talk to the acting class? And yeah, I was like, that was funny. I told that story quite a few times. What did you say? <laughs> no, nah, that yeah. looking more for a senior citizen. Senior citizen. And then you know who was there like the next week? Al Pacino. Al Pacino came to my Out son's to high school, school wow. and was in the acting class reading and you know doing some Shakespeare and stuff with the kids. But that was it was funny. Like, but um, my but, daughter took an acting class in junior high, and I said, "How was school today?" And she goes, "Ah, some asshole was there," wow. and it was. Um, Kevin Spacey. Mm. So it happens. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Was that in LA? Yeah, that was in uh, right here, Sherman Oaks. Wow. All right, so so he, he interviewed you, and we did it over the spring break, and it was such a great interview. I said, you know, I'm gonna put him. I'm gonna do this on the podcast. So. All right, go ahead. All, all right, right, let's get to it. All right, here we go. We're uh, not gay. What? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> we can skip some of these questions. Uh, where were you born? I was born in Far Rockaway, Queens. So I'm a real New Yorker. Even though I was raised in Long Island, yeah. I was born in New York City. We lived in a housing tenement. Me and my brother Joey were the only two Caucasian children in this huge housing tenement. And at the age of two, we moved to Long Island and we became the only Goyim Catholic kids in a rich Jewish neighborhood. So imagine going from... Yeah. The only white kids to the only white trash kids. Yeah. And uh, we grew up in a Jewish neighborhood called the Five Towns. That's cool. So, like, you know, it's funny because I grew up in Fresno, California. I, I, I don't think I remember having a bagel until I was like in like eight, like I was 18. Wow. Like I really I, I didn't really grow up around. I don't think bagels were that. I mean, I don't think they were nationwide, really. Right. I they, don't know. They, I, I do yeah. know that bagels out here suck. You know what a bagel is in L.A.? What? It's bread with a hole in it. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's not, it's not the not real. Not the same, huh? Uh, no, not, I, when I was yeah. just back in New York, the, it was fantastic. I go every morning to the bagel place, mm. and it's expensive. Yeah. I like, um, I do like some bagels, but that, you know, I mean, I don't have anything to compare it to except for other bagels out here, but I, I yeah, like. Yeah, bagels and pizza, everyone says. I like every, I like an everything bagel. So do I. Like that. That's my favorite. Um, what about, okay, next, who was in your family? Brothers, sisters. Uh, my older brother Joey works for One Eight Hundred Invent. Then uh, there's me, and then my younger brother Jimmy is famous on the internet. And then Kathleen owns a jewelry company in Long Island, makes custom jewelry. So there's four of us. Wow, that's cool. You guys all kind of make stuff. Yeah, so it's an unusual little uh, path that we took. And I was about twenty, eh, I guess thirty-three years ago. They did an article in the in our hometown. 
Joey works in the toy business. Jimmy's a toy inventor. Kathleen makes furniture. They have a t-shirt company. Mm. They have a poster company. This It goes on and on for 15 paragraphs. And the last line said, the fourth brother is a transit cup. <laughs> and I felt like, because I used to make stuff before that. I had yeah. craft businesses. Yeah. So I felt very um, stagnated. Yeah. Confiscated. Mm. Confined. Yeah. And now I've broken out. Now you're broken out, and you're like, I I'm making stuff too, guys. No, I'm just yeah. saying, in a yeah. weird way, I just happened to, I was at the workshop all day, and and now I'm making funnies. That's true. You're, you're not only making tables and building furniture, you're making comedy, you're doing podcasts, you're, you know, we're going to do some commercials for something. The wheel people. in the sky keeps on turning. Pound it. That's right. I don't know where I'll be tomorrow. Who <laughs> sings that? <laughs> Steve Perry, Journey. Right. Two points. Replaced by a Filipino. And Steve Perry was in love with? Your wife. And Steve Perry is from Hanford, California, and he has his own bench at the park. And my, and my son sat on the bench. Oh, wow. Yeah, I did not cool. know that. I could, I, I could send you a picture of it. Um, what was your family like? Was, was, uh, everything yeah. was funny. Everything to yeah. get through. My dad, would, my dad was the, um, the epitome of someone that got triggered once a day. My dad threw a fit once a day. No mm -hmm. matter what, he found it. It was 8 in the morning, 8 at night. Yeah. Christmas morning, he bought all of us toys that had no batteries so we were oh, all instead yeah. of us all being happy yeah like all four of us were like it doesn't work, <laughs> it doesn't work. and then he'd be like hey, what do you mean it doesn't yeah, work yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. hold on here's here's, yeah. the, here's the phrase we grew up in a rich neighborhood so so sneakers matter the the the, the decal on the jeans yeah, Sassoon, yeah. jordash yeah. nike puma adidas lacoste all this stuff mattered yeah and we always got the knockoff so, same too, same. Uh, yeah. So instead of getting nights, we got mics. Yeah, yeah. And the swish was upside down. Yep. I got these things called stadias. They look like a whale. And, and, and my dad would scream on Christmas morning, it's just like the one you wanted. Mm. It's not the one you wanted. Right. It was just but like it. <clears throat> looking yeah. back, you know, they did what they could. They raised yeah. five really, I, you know, my parents raised five really... Uh, creative kids that are one step ahead of a lot of things, and I, I say I would say they're better parents than I was. Did you um, did you have Miller's Outpost where you lived? Was that a store? I had Miller's Lot. Miller's. So Miller's Outpost was like a really cool clothing store in the eighties. No, no. And and I remember like my my mom got mad at me because for one Christmas, because I didn't want if I just put like I would like some you know sweatsuit jeans. They'll just grab it from yeah models. Yeah, that's what we got it from. Yeah. So I, I was like dollar ninety nine sweatpants. Yes, they yeah, yeah, fit yeah, weird. There's yeah, no pockets. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, funny, dude. The string you pull, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it, the yeah, other yeah. side pops out, like, and then you're stuck. It. Yeah. So I said Miller's. Uh, I said clothes, and I put like and I underlined it. Please from Miller. I probably didn't say please though. From Miller's Outpost, and she got so mad at me for that. Like wow. And it's hilarious because it wasn't like Bloomingdale's. It was just like no, no. We we yeah. always went to models. It was an Army Navy store. Oh. Oh, and now I like those places, yeah. those Army Navy stores. But I guess it'd be different if you're in school and that's your choice of clothes. It's like, you know, um, describe your life when you were a child, like what you played, the kind oh, of. Oh, I played uh, football from a very young age. Not really baseball, but I played football <coughs> yeah. and I worked in the workshop. I was from a, from five wow. years old. I was in a workshop making stuff. Wow. And what kind of meals did you guys eat? Uh, my dad was in a f uh, cook at the firehouse. And my mom was a, a stay-at-home mom, so a, lo a lot of home-cooked meals. TV, be, din TV dinners? Uh, every now and yeah. then, but, but mostly home-cooked to the point where, like, I actually really miss it. Because yeah. I'm single now, so I'm all day long at a drive through mm -hmm. And uh, Did you guys have a routine with your meals? Not really, not really. But I don't know if this fits into that. We used to go to a lot of New York City fire department events, mm. barbecues with hundreds of kids, hundreds of firemen, and it was nothing but a fantastic memory. Wow. Fant and my wife was at these functions when we were five and seven and 10 years old, and we didn't know each other. Oh, wow, because she also was yeah. in the fire department. No, well, she was in a you know, blue collar family. Wow. And then. I graduated the New York City Police Academy with 2,900 other men and women, world record, mm. in Madison Square Garden. Maybe you heard of it. And uh, <laughs> that was December 18th. 
1986, and I was down in the pit with all the grad, you know, on the floor where the hockey or the basketball would be. Yeah. <clears throat> and my future wife was up in the stands. Wow. And we didn't know each other. And now your next wife was probably born about <laughs> years ago. <laughs> yeah. Someone likes the young ones. Hey, watch this. Yeah. I could actually say that a girl I was hanging out with, she was young, but I would say she's five days older than my daughter. Right? So it makes it okay. Yeah. It's sarcastic. She's five days older than my daughter. Right? Yeah. A lot of math for an audience. Though. Okay. Daughter, five days. Uh, now. Yeah. yeah. The new one I met is 23 years older than my grandson. Mm. Oh. Well, that's good. She sounds like an older woman. I don't know how old your grandson is. Was he He's 18 one. Now? He's one. Ah! She's 24. You should show up on the date with this boss. She's 24. Hey, honey. <laughs> let's, let's have some dinner. I want to have a nice, solid stool. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, we'll put that away. Uh, yeah, I remember we used to have, like... Like a routine with our with our you know meals. No, no, I know. What you mean. Well, uh, I know. I do know this. Yeah. That it w my dad got paid every other Thursday as a New York City fireman, and Wednesday night we always had eggs and pancakes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, see, I like that. Breakfast eggs. at dinner. Oh yeah. But they, 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 oh, that's good. They, uh, they, they sold it to you like it was a treat. Yeah. But they weren't telling you we have no money. That's funny. yeah. So whenever my dad would go out of town on Saturdays, rather than doing the pancake breakfast and blah, 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 my mom would go to Winchell's Donuts, and so we'd have donuts on Saturday wow. morning. Which is, looking back, I'm like, that's probably not the best nutrition, you know? That's Two, a rough one. Like a dozen donuts. But when you're a kid, who, I mean, dude, who wouldn't want donuts for breakfast? I bought a dozen donuts yesterday. I couldn't wait to have one. I bought them for the guys at the lumberyard. Yeah. And, uh, hey, Matt. Yo. And, um... I had one, it wasn't good. It was just too sugary. Yeah, it was like, yeah, Ooh. I know. It's Easy. like now I'm used to blueberries. Blueberries is like the perfect sweetness, Ooh. you know? I tried, I tried a um, peanut butter and jelly a couple years ago. It was too sweet. It, wasn't, yeah. it was gross. I'd rather have peanut butter and blueberries. Speaking of too sweet, did I mention that I'm hanging out with a girl that's 24 years old? Nice. So we, we covered what do your parents do for work. Um, you know what's what, sugary? What's that? The devil's cookie. The devil's cookie. Ooh. Go ahead. How about an angel's cookie? <laughs> Go Let's ahead. Keep it positive. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what is your fondest memory of childhood? Um, believe it or not, I don't think I've ever told anyone this. I didn't tell your son this. Hmm. Miller's Lot was a big nursery that sold Christmas trees and flowers for 100 years. And when we were all about seven or eight years old, it closed. And it stayed vacant for years. Dirt bikes, oh, yeah. bonfires. Oh. It was our Lord of the Flies, yeah. really. And I, there was a section all the way in the back left where there must have been a garbage dump. Mm. And I used to dig with a couple of other guys. And we dig and we bring up bottles from the 1800s. Wow. Crazy bottles that had like... So and so snake oil and potion. Yeah. Coca Cola. You know, a Coke bottle made 150 years ago. Wow. And that was a very um. I have a whole collection at my mom's house. It was though. fun, like treasure hunting. It was. It was a crazy weird thing that I don't think I've thought of in 55 years. Have you gone back and looked at it to see how big that lot is, or what's? No, no. They yeah. built houses. Oh. So we they built six houses on it, and we wind up playing in those. Now we were like drinking age. So while the houses were being built, we're in a like a in a house drinking and smoking pot at 16. Mm. Now people live in them. But yeah. I, I've yet to look at the bottle collection in my mother's basement. I haven't looked at it in 25, 30 Whoa. years. Oh, yeah. Well, I grew up around some empty fields myself. We used to love going to the fields. And then, and then even as I was growing up, and I remember being like 11, like one of the fields, they built apartment complexes on it. So, well, there goes that field. But before then, I would like ride my dirt bike or my. They paved paradise yeah. and put up a parking lot. Yeah. Johnny Mitchell put up a parking lot. Yeah. Next. Okay. What one event in your childhood changed your life the most? How and why? Mm. Probably not to get too sappy, but when I was about 16 or 17, I fell in love with a girl. Mm. Doreen Zampaglioni. 
Nice. Mm -hmm. That's cool. See, I like this. You know, by the way, you gave a different answer last time. Last time you said something about uh, going to a Twisted Sister concert. Oh, got it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, right. Instead of going to my prom. Yeah, yeah. Instead of going to my high school prom, I went to see Twisted Sister, and it was the greatest concert ever. And it's on YouTube. You can watch it tonight. North Stage Dinner Theater. It was the night of my high school prom. And I want to try and find myself in the audience, yeah. but it's 1,500 white trash punks mm -hmm. with a mullet, a mm -hmm. denim vest, with their fists to the light. Every one of them looks alike. Wow. Did they have that song, I Wanna Rock? Did they have that? No, no, no that's no, funny that, you add. No, that, that, that album came out in 84. Wow. And the same thing with the other big hit that I know. Uh, We're not yeah, no, they didn't it. have either of those. But wow. they had, they had, there's 25 songs that we all knew word for word. Tear It Loose, Ladies yeah. Boy. And then how did you guys feel when those songs got popular? Like people like... I was I was off trying to get on the police department oh. and, I, and it just it was weird. We're not... I, I, I didn't really follow yeah. them then. Oh, really? I didn't follow them as much. No, but I will tell you this. I would have been in the heavy metal history books. I picked up and moved. I failed out of two colleges. Yeah. I moved to Huntington Beach, California. <clears throat> Right, I graduated 82. By 84, I'm a failure at two colleges. My brother Joey says, move to Huntington Beach, I'll get you a job. Mm. I moved to Huntington Beach and I checked, you know how like the local paper has three pages and it has entertainment? Yeah. So you always look for the comedy clubs? Yeah, yeah. And it was an article, one inch by one inch. And it said, heavy metal fan, question mark. Be in the Twisted Sister video, we're not going to take it. Wow. And it was 3,000 miles from where yeah. I saw Twisted Sister. Yeah. And it was at, um, oh, if you said the name, it's off the 57. It's a, uh, It was at that high school out here. I wouldn't know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. that's cool. Montebello High School. Wow. And guess what happened? I was all ready to go, and a friend of ours got killed in a drunk driving accident, Roger. And we just, we had to mourn him and go and get drunk. Yeah. I would have been, when, when the, right. yeah, you during wanna, the stands. Yeah, yeah you would have been crying. And, yeah. No, no, I'm saying, I would have been in the video. Yeah. I want to rock. How, how was your life different back then as it compared to today? Uh, less troubles, less health problems, less bills. More fun. I mean, if you think about it, all it was was planning the next fun event. But here it's bills. Yeah. yeah. You're right. Problems. Isn't that crazy? How we, we, I think we have to adjust our thinking sometimes because you're right. If you were to be like a 16 year old kid and see what you're doing now, like doing comedy, building furniture, people are interviewing you for their shows. It's getting not it a rat there. race. You know what I mean? It, and I used yeah. to just, I know you're not going to answer, but back then I listened to Frampton Comes Alive on 8 track. Yeah. Frampton Comes Alive, Cheap Trick. And, um, yeah. Bob Dylan, times are changing. Yeah. They um, what's the uh, the cheap trick song? The one that's big. I want you, Mommy, want me. No, that was that that wasn't out yet. Oh. Mommy's all right. Oh yeah yeah Daddy's yeah. Daddy's all right. They just dun, seem a dun, little dun, dun, weird. Dun. Surrender. Yeah. And I just listened to it, the album the other night. You're on top of the world. You're on top of the world. What was the one that I just said? The, the cheap That was song? Live from Budokan. That was like the most famous. No, what was the name of the song I just said? Oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, anyways, they did the same. What is it? I uh, want Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's, a, that's a copy of somebody. You want me. Yeah. I need you. So they have a Christmas song. Do you know how the Christmas song goes? No. And you can look it up. I want you for Christmas. No, you... I need Yeah, it's like the laziest Christmas song. <laughs> yeah. Uh... We're gonna skip this over. Uh, t -t -t -t. What was the best thing that ever happened at school? Mm. And what were your best subjects? Oh, I, did, I believe in I took a filmmaking class. I liked that a lot. And so who knew that in ninth or 10th grade, I wanted to be in the movies. Wow. I took a, a filmmaking class. And you did get to go to the movies. With Mr. Dunn. I know, I know I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I lost my way for a long time. Um, even I, I found an old phone book from when I was a kid, mm -hmm. teenager, and every single page was just a comedy club. Wow. It was governors, brokerage, you know what I'm saying? It was Especially old, back then when you're like, like 16 or 17. Clubs. Yeah. yeah. I mean, New York, it's like, you know, isn't that crazy? You, you would see governors and then now you're, you're performing there. I know. And dude, the whole thing, all of it. 
The fact that I'm doing a podcast for you when I'm a star. <laughs> the fact that this we're making your kitchen turning it into no, a I don't set. Mind, dude. I don't yeah. mind at all. I don't mind at all. I'm a, I, I don't want to sound like a complainer. I'm just happy. I'm not. What was? I'm not in a hospital. Yep. I'm not in a rehab, and I'm not broke. Um, your turn. What problems did teenagers have back then? Where are we going to get our pot? Whose car are we going to borrow? Mm. Yeah. Did you guys eat on campus or off campus? That's a good question. We had a cafeteria, but we could, it, we were, it's a funny question. We could eat the cafeteria mm. or you could literally walk a hundred feet to a red light, Chinese restaurant, pizza, China Jade. Mm. Yeah. I think we weren't allowed to go on camp off campus until 11th grade. Oh, no, no. Yeah. Everyone could come and go. Wow. And did, did you go on any dates in high school? I went on a lot of dates. Yeah. I was handsome. I was captain of the football team. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you know that. And you guys are probably... Yes, hold on. Doreen Zampaglioni, Susan Schneider, Debbie Maggots, Missy Reyna. Wow. Jenny Langsam, Eileen Carney. Tell me when to stop. Wow, look at you. What did you guys do on dates? Like, did you... Was it's it funny. more well, wholesome we, a little uh, bit? Once we turned imagine? 16, yeah. you could get fake ID for 18. Mm -hmm. You had to be 18 to drink. So as soon as we turned 16 or 17, everybody took their date to Beef Steak Charlie's. Mm. Nine ninety nine. At least I think it might even be less. It was like five ninety nine. You got a steak, all you could drink beer, wine, and sangria, and all the shrimp you could eat. Wow! And that was the date. That was the everybody went. Wow! Beef steak, Charlie's. Who was your first love? Uh, I w want to say Susan Schneider, but it was probably Doreen Zampaglione. And did the person love you back, or was it you just a one-way? No, crush? no, no, no. We we were madly in love, and and oh. about a couple of years into it. I got eased aside, and uh, I just got back in touch with her 42 years later. Oh, wow. Found it. She thinks I'm a star. Wow. That's and I cool. look like George Crooney. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Um, we're going to skip some of these questions because we you sort of already answered Yeah, no them. problem. Uh, t -t 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 How old were you when you first got married? 24. <clears throat> wow. Got married on the side of Diamond Head Mountain in Hawaii. Wow. I should have jumped off right there. <laughs> Getting married, man. Dang. I don't know what I was thinking. I got married at 28. How long were you dating? 10 months. Yeah, we were dating about eight months when oh, I asked shit. her. Wow. And then it was like another three months. Yeah. But then we had a baby nine months later. We oh, had wow. Another baby 11 months later. Dang. And another baby 11 months later. That's like the real, like, da, da, da. yeah, my wife and I, we didn't, we didn't get, we didn't have our first kid. Well, we only have one child, but we didn't have Austin, aka Austin, the base boss, until we were married for like 10 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. We, you know, we just were like, dude, I, was, I went from being a single yeah. guy with a nice car to being broke with three yeah. kids and a wife in, in three years. And your life does change when you're, uh, yeah, it's like, you know, yeah, it's like, I, I think it's for the better. For me, it's for the better. And it's for the better, right? The grandson, the whole thing, but, but it definitely changes. You know, it's uh, you know. I think being married with kids, but you got very young, is yeah. a long, dry hand job, yeah. And I mean that with all due respect, yeah, yeah, pound it, yeah. I think your situation is different though, with three kids, the pressure, the cops, no, broke, yeah. just, yeah, uh, yeah, I, just yeah. I, I blamed everything on everybody, you know yeah. what I mean? Because I think when you, you know, like I appreciate it, like, like Austin's 16, and I'm like, I'm not one of those. Parents, it's like I can't wait till he turns eighteen and get the hell out of my. I'm like every day, I like I look. Yeah, right, right, right. That's good. That's the only way you should look at yeah, it. Yeah, I want to be like you know, like even today, I'm like we're talking. I'm you know hanging out with him a little, little bit, but he's I guess he's trying to study, and I'm trying to like edit, and I'm like yeah, I, if you're in a weird yeah. spot because sooner yeah. or later it's going to be all his friends in a car, and, and you're going to you know, and, and I don't want you to pick me up in front of school, <laughs> yeah, all that stuff, you know. But but you know, he and I bond over a lot of stuff, making videos, comedy, music. No, you you're you very know, lucky. I love, I love that. I, yeah, and I'm, I'm lucky to have him and you know our thing now is we do um, he's because he, he likes to one-up me so I do 100 push-ups a day Oof. and then he's like dude I did 101 you know he go how many did you and so now he he, he got a, he was a little um, you know, he had a cough so we're like yeah you don't need to do the 100 push-ups even though he did it every day since January 1st so he took 11 days off and to make up for it now he's doing 200 push-ups well, a day but he's gonna stop that on Saturday and then I go, couldn't do one and go back to the hundred it's just about Imagine if your dad made you do it, though. No, I'm just saying, I, yeah. if I had to yeah. do one right now, I couldn't do one. Well, yeah, no, I, I had to start on, the, on my knees like a girl, and then that, and then I eventually worked up. But yeah, I know what you're saying. It's it's hard at first if you don't if you don't do it. Um, you have a grandchild? Yes, I do. Noah is his name. He's one year old. 
What's different about today's children and teenagers as compared to when you were growing up? Mm, I think we were much more less triggered. I know it's a, an easy answer. Yeah. I think teenagers know more a lot about the world now and they're more opinionated and they're trained in these schools to dislike certain things and to believe in yeah. global warming. Yeah, it was funny because we when my son interviewed you a week ago, you basically said kids today are a bunch of spoiled maggots. No, no shit. Who <laughs> love to gaslight? When yeah. I was growing up, the kids were whatever you said. I couldn't really. It, it faded right there. <laughs> um, I think we said enough. Yeah. I love it though, but it's true though, right? Like the things are a little bit different, and you know, I, I still feel like we were a little bit, we were a lot more polite. I mean, I'm sure there's some polite kids out there, but they definitely, you know, we. I always like to call people by their last name, and I, yeah, I like to hear that still. You know, I don't. I, I just don't think that kids don't go and play anymore. You know what I mean? Everyone from the day they're a little kid till the day they go to college. They don't really get out of the house. They don't. You know what I mean? Remember, we used to leave at sun up and come down at you know at night at night. Yeah. Mm. Strange. When you look at some of the highlights of your life, um, what do you say like two or three highlights are? Uh, I did a one-man show that turned into a sitcom as a highlight. I had my own sitcom. That's a highlight. I got drunk yeah. with Robert De Niro. I did yeah. the Tonight Show. You did the Tonight Show. Yeah. However, I did Couch. Um. The birth of my grandson, the birth of my three kids, but the birth of my grandson somehow, some way is, is kind of made it all the shit sandwiches worth it. Yeah. For lack of a better term. I'm a street poet. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> do you have any regrets? How much time do we have? <laughs> no, not really. Because watch this. I resigned the New York City Police Department 26 years ago today. Yeah. Just by chance. Dang. And resigning at that time saved me from 9-11. Yeah. So the few times I might think, oh, I lost my pension. I should have stayed. I might have been killed on 9-11 or I have cancer now from 9-11. Yeah. So I don't have many regrets. I mean, you know, I, I'm glad I, I could really say at this very right now moment everything I've been through has kind of helped me you yeah. know what I mean people say it as a cliche but and me, you also have a reason to get up every day with your work workshop and then the gigs and the yeah you know it'd be I, I'm, I'm yeah. really glad that I don't just live from stand-up gig to stand-up gig like a lot of these guys move to Vegas yeah they don't have a day job you know they're our age yeah. And they go from 50 to 100 to 100 to 300 to 550, and they, they sit on top of the phone. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm, yeah. I'm glad that's not me. Right. It's, it's uh, yeah, and, 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 and they left technology behind where they're like, they don't know how to use yeah. Yeah, yeah, social yeah. media or any of this stuff, or they're not connected with anyone. They're not on the YouTubes. It. Exactly. It's like, you got to... You know, entertain people out there like you guys. You with they, the Facebooks? Yeah, I'm, I'm on MySpace. Tom's my friend. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Do you have? Um, oh, oh! Before we get into the hobbies, uh, do you? Would you like to retire? Do you not want to retire? Um, you, if I had enough money and I could buy a house in the wilderness with a lake and a pool, yes. But I don't have. I I have. A, I do have a little bit of a monthly income. But I would, uh, I mean, I, I would look forward to it, yeah. I mean, it, someone asked me the other day, because I had the best show ever as a stand-up Saturday mm -hmm. night. Yeah. And I left a few things at this par house party. I went back the next day. And the wife said, which do you like better, the stand-up or the woodworking? I said, the stand-up. I don't have to answer to anyone, the color. Right. I don't have to be <laughs> physically hurt with tools. I don't have to carry things. And she said, if you never, ever, ever had to do another set, would it bother you? I said, probably, but after Saturday night went so well, and I'm gonna put it out as an album, John DeResta, Your Mom's Cookie. <laughs> um, you they, know, they recorded it? I recorded it on my phone, but the audio yeah, yeah. is really, it sounds like an old Rodney oh, Dangerfield album. Cool. People yelling at each other. Yeah. And then, dude, when I said Ozzy Adeo, it turned into a fight in the audience. <clears throat> wow. And that'll were... be on the album. That'll wow. be the track, Ozzy versus Dio, the argument. Wow. Yeah. That's funny. Um, I, I was just talking to a guy today. He's a, dr shout out to Sal. He's a drummer for the group War. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Low Rider. He um, 
He's been with the band for like 30 something years. His very first concert, I want to say it was 1971 or 72. He told me it was Black Sabbath. Wow. Here in Los Angeles. Wow. Yeah, we should, uh, we should connect, man. I know you guys would dig each other, like the music and stuff. Um, That's George Lopez's opening song. Yeah. Do you have any, outside of woodworking and comedy, do you, do you have any hobbies? Yeah, I'm a canoodler. I don't know what the word is, but I'm, I, uh, I have a sketchbook or a slam book. Mm. And I write down woodworking, I write down the sets, what worked, what didn't work, where I worked, if I got paid, mm. the date. You know, I transcribe. Yeah. I take notes like a detective. But while I'm doing that, I draw really funky, weird faces and flames and, and, and like a lot of people think they could be used as tattoos. Wow. You know how like uh, Hunter Biden would paint something and then people would pay like 1.5 million yeah, yeah, for yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if you could ever draw or something or paint. I don't or, know. I don't, I'm not like, good. I'm, I, it, my stuff is more just, you know, pen to paper. It's yeah. weird. Every now and then I'll mess around with a brush and I can't get it. Mm. Imagine if you did, because I know this one comedian, he, uh, uh, Jamar Neighbors, shout out to Jamar. He, he paints these, he's gotten really good at this stuff. Well, it's, it's like creative. I'd say did you ever see what Terry Crews paints? No. The guy from... Uh, the guy with the chest? Dude. That guy? He's Picasso. Really? He'll paint you or me sitting here, yeah. and it looks like a snapshot. Wow. It's, 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 it's unbelievable. Wow. Yeah. I've got to look into that. Yeah. I'll Google it. So anyways, Jamar Neighbors, he, he would, I'd see him at the comedy store in the main room, and at the end of his set, he holds up his art and, and does like a bidding thing with the audience, and sometimes they... Oh, yeah. Well, I want to do that in a one-man yeah. show, yeah. You could totally do that. Yeah. Um, Okay, a lot of the questions are similar to the ones you already asked. Uh, if you had your life to live over again, would you change anything? Probably, but I, I mean, I have to think on it. Yeah. You know, but at the end of the day, if it got me here, and you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there was a great, God, I, I, I'm trying to think, because I love the answer that you said last time on the- um, Go ahead. Okay, I don't, I forget the question. Um, it might have been, "What advice would you give me about life?" I think it was, it was, it was you gave my son Austin this about life. Was it save your money, manage no, your money? No. What was, basically the answer was the and I'll say soy sauce if that rings a bell. But not getting letting you know not, soy sauce. If you order Chinese food and they don't have soy sauce and you yeah, really there's no reason to flip out. Yeah, that, that, yeah, like, you got to you know. say nothing is a big deal. Nothing is a big deal. Let it roll off your back and don't worry because 95% of what you worry about never happens. So it's taking up the energy in your mind when you should just be solving the problem. Like, I'll give you an example. If we're building something at the shop and we go to put it together and we, we cut it and measured it wrong, instead of trying to figure out where we cut it or measure it wrong, I don't even care for one second. Right. I switch to how do we fix it because it's already messed up. Somebody did, doesn't matter, but my wife, Fran, God rest his soul, would hop for the next hour. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. About what took place already. And it's taken up time from pro solving yeah. the problem. It's like, that's the past that's going on. I remember one day, you and I were on our way to a, a Christmas party to perform. And, um, and I remember the curb was really high. And when I went to park, it kind of hit my front end and it kind of scraped it a little bit. And I was like, ah, and then you go, ah, and then you said something like, if that's the worst thing that happens today, it ain't yeah. that bad. Yeah. It, 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 the, the three things today happened today that I didn't want and I didn't agree with. Yeah. And all three things I said, all right, if that's the biggest problem of the day, I'll take it. It could always be worse. Always, 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 always. Yeah. Right on, man. Uh, anything else you want to add before we end this podcast? No, I want to say thank you for all your help with the videos, the support. We met, um, what was the name of that comedy club we met at? Back in the day, it was uh, it was in the LA Valley. Connection. LA Connection. LA Cabaret. LA, LA Cabaret. Cabaret. Yeah, yeah. That place had a sad vibe, didn't it? it was yeah. Amazing. It had a weird. It did. It did. It had yeah. like a darkness. Like it yeah. looked like you were going into like a museum. Yeah, it did. It had like that front area and then the back area and it was like. And yeah. there was a picture of you in a frame in Playgirl magazine or something. Yeah, you remember. I remember. It's hilarious. Yeah, my wife and I did radio. I did a, like Kiss FM or something. And the guy that was the publicist for the radio station, he's like, you know, we had just got married, my wife and I. And um, 
and, he, and uh, he goes, "Hey, I want to get you some publicity." And he and he we went. I, and, he, and he, he put like comedian Darren Carter marries his wife, and I was in Playgirl. I was in that year. I was in Playgirl magazine, and I was in Lowrider magazine. Wow! I did a show in Phoenix, Arizona. It's crazy. Like when you think about a lot of things, hit pretty. But media is different back then. I mean, I was in. You know what I mean? When you think about like TV, movies, magazines. Well, like, imagine, man, imagine just yeah. being in a newspaper or a magazine yeah, yeah, was the yeah, biggest yeah. deal. Totally, you get lots of copies of it. Yeah, you know, yeah. Remember that? You're like, hey, I got five copies yeah. or ten copies, however many you could get. Yeah, yeah, you know? that's funny. And now that's you, funny. You realize like people don't really, uh, you know, like even if like even I did a great yeah. show on Saturday. Yeah. And it, it's it's wearing off. You know what I mean? It's back to making furniture. It's back to you know what I mean? Yeah. It's 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 strange what we do. However, we do bring a very immediate. And a very well-needed happiness to yeah. people. That's the way I look at it now. In today's day and age, for them to come out and just to forget everything for an hour yeah. while we bust balls on the audience, it's it's a real. And I saw, um, not to get too deep, I saw a girl on Instagram that she imitates Kamala Harris. Yeah, and she's really that. good at it. Yeah. There's a few of them. Yeah, and she said, you know, you guys want to give me. You know, give me S for. I'm not dumping on Kamala Harris. I just happen to have the gift of being funny, mm. and and she she called it a gift, and it was weird yeah. to be reminded that we're not just doing this for fifty dollars. We're not doing it till we see the red light, so we can run back home. Right. You know, we're up there, and and we have a gift. You know, I get those messages. That's what's great about Instagram is is those videos have taken off. You know, thank you guys for subscribing and following me. And and I'll get those messages occasionally where people are like, "Again, you made my day," or they'll be like, "I was having a terrible day, and this made my day." And it's like, "Oh wow!" It's yeah, like it feels really good. You know, it's uh, it, it, deep down inside, anyone, either comedians or people, even in the comedy business, what I found with my daughter is. People that work at the comedy club or a team to, to, to entertain these people that came through the door. Yeah. Like, they greet them when they come in, and on the way out, they say, you know, we did it as a team. You know yeah. what I mean? These yeah. people are from another state. This is their big night out. We go to the improv 50 times a week. Yeah. This is their big night to come to the improv or the Laugh Factory. You know what I mean? It's a big deal. It might be their birthday. Whatever it yeah. is, it's a way bigger event to them than it is us. Yeah. You know, Dave Chappelle said it 50 years ago. People dress nice and put on perfume to come see me. <laughs> yeah. It's wild. There's a, there's a country music singer. I, I love a lot of different artists. And I love to learn from them. And there's a guy that I love named Tom T. Hall. God rest his soul. He was a great performer. And one of the last performances that he did, um, the last thing he said um, when he's like, you know, his, he's finished his song, everyone's clapping, and he goes, I don't know if it's possible, but I hope you had as much of a good time as I did. Oh, wow, that's nice. That's good nice. night. And they were like, oh my gosh. And it was so sincere in the way. Well, watch you know. this. I texted, I'll tell you quickly, uh, the guy that I worked for Saturday Night Long Island owns three clubs. Mm hmm. So he called me on Sunday and said, do you want to do a guest spot? So now I have his phone number. Yeah. Right? Because I don't book my gig, someone else books him. So today I just texted him. I said, you know what? I don't know if I should reach out to him. I, I got to go through an agent. I said, James, I just want to let you know I've been doing this for 31, 32 years. Saturday night was the greatest show I ever had. And that's because you invited me. You don't know my wife died two years ago. And Saturday night was not only fun, it was cathartic, comma, for all of us. And it couldn't have happened if you didn't invite me to your club. I hope to see you again, John DeResta. My point being, Saturday night wasn't just ha ha ha, penis joke, ha ha ha. There was a, there was a reunion, people hadn't seen each other in 50 years, <coughs> and there was all inside jokes. Yeah. It was imagine two hundred people that kind of we kind of know him and oh and, you know what I mean like it, yeah. and, and then if they didn't know the person they knew him because I explained who it was and the joke meant you dig what I mean yeah like it wasn't just you in the red hat what do you do I'm an engineer you drive the train yeah 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 I don't come to the work with your fries and knock them out of your hand right. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was like a, you're, you're gelling everyone together, and it's, dude, especially because a lot of the audience is probably like closer to your age, and you guys have similar memories. Oh, totally, and, totally. So, and here's um, yeah, here's what I'm seeing in you and in me is that we uh, it's it's deep shit. We we orchestrate. Yeah, we like orchestrate the fun. Yeah. I like that, you know. Um, we orchestrate the fun. It's, it's not an easy thing to do. Yeah, it's not. As compared to blah, 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 dating no, no, no. sites. Blah, 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 yeah. blah, 405. Right. Like, you told me about that. Like, you, when you said, like, these comedians, like, I went to the coffee shop and I wrote down my joke and I delivered it. And it, I'm going to do some new stuff now. Yeah. It's like, what's entertaining about that? So I think when the person is alive up there and they're, like, connected to the audience, if it's an entertainer, stand-up comedian, a singer. That's the number I'm, one thing is it's a known thing it's it's showmanship and presentation those are the two things showmanship and presentation like everyone's telling me oh i can't believe it i go all i do is get a haircut every four weeks i got this suit jacket for free but i had it tailored mm. i wear the same pants every night i wear the same shoes in my workshop as i do on stage but see how dusty they are yeah do you know what i do before a show Clean them. I spray paint them black. Wow. They look brand new every time. Wow. <laughs> I just spray paint them. Inside tips. <laughs> but that's but my point being, yeah. where other comedians, like hooded sweat jacket, uh, uh, let me see. Uh, oh, what? I got lost. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Donald Trump thinks that he didn't win the elections. Uh, his wife is a slut. Yeah, it's like, how's that Hold funny? Hold on, it's a funny character. Yeah, yeah do that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you got to do the cop character? <laughs> Keep your hands where I can see. Oh, them. dude, listen. I want to give you credit. Knowing I was going to go over the edge on Saturday night. Yeah. Because my mom wasn't there. Yeah. Dude, 1013, cocked and loaded. I knew the address of the club. 1013, 5787 Merrick Road. He's getting racial. He's getting racial, <laughs> Central Viva. Yeah. Dude, 1013. And in a strange twist of fate... Every police department has different call letters. Did yeah. you know that? I think so, yeah. So the bridge collapsed yesterday. Did you hear what the cop said? No. 1013. Wow. Bridge is collapsed. 1013. Send everybody. 1013, what does that mean? In, in New York, that means I'm in trouble. I'm being oh, shot at. Oh, wow. 1085 means I need help. 1085 forthwith means I really need help. Wow. 1013 means my life's on the line. Damn. So you're saying 1013, and that means... I'm saying 1013 just because half the guys in that audience were cops. And it was a funny... Yeah. It, it's a smooth over to do a dirty joke. What do they do in L.A.? Do, do you know I don't know. I don't know the call. I don't know. I could find it out. But I, the odds of it being yeah. 1013 yeah. are slim. We should just walk by different cops and say, say numbers. Just right. Do cops know... Do And then we're going to wrap up. Do, do other... When you're around L.A. and you speak to cops, do you think they have any inkling that you used to be a cop or... No, I tell them right up front to make yeah. them feel safe just so yeah. they don't suspect me and or if we go to a 7-Eleven, I say how I was on the job in case something happens that one second. You know what I mean? I, I want them to save me. <laughs> oh, I was on the job? Yeah. yeah. And did they, people do that when you were like on the job? Yeah. Like, you know, older yeah, guys would come up, hey, I yeah, used to be yeah, a yeah, cop 100%. in the 60s. Or yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And cool. watch this. When you say you're on the job out here, a lot of them don't get it. They it's, don't. A, it's an inside thing. Two things in New York is I was on the job means you're a cop because you could say it in public. Hey, I'm on the job. Me too. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the other one is on the arm. That means I think you only I only know this because you told me this. What does it mean? It means uh, you go to a restaurant like, uh, hey, give me a free meal because I'm a cop. Like, well, I'm no, on the job. No, no, it's funny. You go to pay. Yeah. Oh. And they do that. Oh, they, they do. They, the oh, yeah. They let you know it's a freebie. Oh, wow. It's on the arm. That, oh, wow. Dude, I, watch this. I took these notes for one this thing. Yeah. I got to put that down for the next show. On the job. On the job. Yeah. And on the arm. On the arm. On that note, we'll leave. And I want to thank you guys. Do me a favor. Subscribe. Share the podcast. Share the reels. Follow John DeResta on Instagram. Follow Darren Carter. Official Darren Carter. You guys have a great rest of your day. And uh, don't hurt nobody. Be yeah, careful. thank you, my man. Thank you, buddy. You got it. Everybody cool. listen to Darren Carter We all know he's the party starter So if you want to listen to a podcast for free Then listen to The Pocket Party